Hello again, Mark Johnson here, pastor at Bowsman Memorial United Church of Christ in Why Missing, Pennsylvania, and I welcome you to this midweek devotion. It's good to have you with us. Today's reading comes from 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 20 to 22. Do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. And that's 1 Thessalonians 5, 20 to 22. Again, thank you for joining in here today. St. Paul is writing to the church in Thessalonica, and he's telling them some words of wisdom that you're going to hear from many prophets or religious leaders uh, communicating the faith in different ways, different understandings. Paul has his understandings, and after he would leave, other prophets and leaders and teachers would come and give their understanding of the faith. And Paul says it's okay to listen to them. Listen to them. Hear what they have to say. They might have something to offer, something to add. But remember to test it. To test it. To fold your arms a little bit and go, hmm, how does that resonate with what I know and believe and come to understand about things, about the faith? Is it in line with it? Is it different? Just because it's different doesn't mean it's wrong. You know, we all only know in part. Uh, one day we'll know in full, but probably not here on this earth. I'm reminded of uh, the Monty Python skit back when I was younger, um, where these different people were holding on to different parts of the elephant. And uh, one person saying, oh, it's long and it's hard and it's and it's white. And another person holding on part of the elephant, no, it's very skinny and it's got some hairy thing here on the end. And each of the people were holding on to different parts of the elephant, all had their understandings and, and their limitations. And so do people. And so when you listen to people, listen to them, listen to me. But then weigh what I say. Weigh what I say. And um, how does it resonate? Maybe I need to check that. Maybe I need to do some research on that. I never heard that before. Today there are lots of prophets of truth out there on TV and in the, around the coffee table and uh, down at the watering hole and um, right now in our very own homes. And, uh, and uh, are they really telling the truth? Listen to them. Listen to them. But test what they say. And hold on to what's good. You, you tested it. You hold on to Hey, that's, that, that sounds good. I validated that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to incorporate that or I'm going to think more about it. One of the things that the uh, ancient um, kings and queens had were official taste testers. And uh, in case there was any hemlock or arsenic in the, in the food. And then they would eat it. You and I, we, we have to be our own taste testers to uh, what, is, what is good and helpful and nourishing to our spirits and to our souls and to our minds, just like uh, those taste testers uh, back in the ancient days did to protect the king's body and the queen's body from, from poison. Here in this day, uh, I'd encourage you to read some uh, things that on your own that feed your mind and feed your soul and spirit. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer's The Cost of Discipleship, a classic, is always a good one to read. And I think in now, these days, it, it's really a good one, too. C.S. Lewis, another classic. Uh, the Screwtape Letters, they're funny and they're insightful. And uh, they're, really, they're really good reads. I'd also encourage you to, uh, to read the Bible on your own. Uh, pick a passage like I just did here today and, um, and contemplate it. Um, I encourage you to use a little, a little strategy when you read a passage or a section of scripture to, uh, to look and see, well, you know, what's the issue here? What's the concern here? What's the problem here? What's the worry here? What's the challenge here? And then try to, once you identify that, one of those, maybe there's more than one, and then you think about, you know, is there an analogy or a parallel uh, into our world? A challenge, an issue, a worry, a concern. And to try and name that and, and try and make that connection. And then to go back into the scripture and then to look for what the scripture, uh, if there is an answer or a solution or an idea or an insight about how to respond to that challenge and 
concern that's named in the text. And then to try and make a parallel into our world and our time. Is there, a, is there a, an equivalent that's going on for us that we can gain some wisdom and insight on, on how, to, how to be in our time? Um, and then after you do that, I'd encourage you, if you have internet access, to go on the internet and to, and to check out uh, what other people think on that passage. All you have to do is just um, get your favorite search engine and type in your passage and then put commentary or interpretation right next to it. And then a whole bunch of them will come up. And then read a few of them. Read a few of them and see what they say. Listen to what you say and what you come up with. And then, and then compare it and test it with what other people say. This is uh, our thought for the day. Um, another thing is also out there that I've found helpful over the time is to read um, um, secular authors. You know, there you go on, again on the internet and you can find the top 10 or top 50 or top 100 literary works and then to read those and uh, listen to what they say. They have things to say. And then, uh, and then test it. Test it with what you believe and what you understand. And uh, ask God to bless your efforts to grow in your faith and love and knowledge of, of what is good and what is right and what is true to help you walk better paths. I want to close with a, an old legend from uh, a Cherokee legend, uh, supposedly, whether it is or not, um, I don't really know. But um, it goes like this. An old Cherokee was teaching his grandson about life. A fight is going on within me, he said to the boy. It's a terrible fight. It's between two wolves. One is evil. He is angry, envious, sorrowful, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. He continued, the other is good. He is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going on inside of you and inside of every other person. The grandson thought about it for a moment and said to his grandfather, which wolf will win? And the old Cherokee simply replied, the one you feed, the one you feed. Just like we feed our bodies and uh, hopefully we make good choices um, with the way we eat our food, and uh, over time, we can tell the impact that it has on our bodies, um, what we're eating. And in the same way with what we're taking into our minds and our spirits and into our souls, those messages and those lessons, you know, which, which ones are we letting in? And what impact is, is it having over us? We can tell by the, the impact it has in the way we live and the way we are. May God bless you to, to feed your spirit and your soul and your body well. And may God bless you to live this day for you and others and God as well as yourself. And in Jesus' name, amen.